Some of us kept you in the light. Yeah. <laughs> not fair. Not fair. Eh? Not fair. <laughs> yeah. Now if we put these lights on, they'll flicker and mm. it's, it won't be nice. So, uh, just say I generator can't cope with everything. If anybody would like to donate for us to get a bigger generator. <laughs> okay. So, thank you. <laughs> but welcome to our service this morning. It's Good to see you all and to come and have fellowship with one another, but especially with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And uh, that's our purpose for being here to worship the Lord and to praise Him. Um, tonight is no youth meeting, and then on Friday morning, as usual, the ladies' pre meeting at 10 o'clock, uh, not in the hall, in the kitchen. They find it a lot warmer. and. Um, they were very grateful this last Friday because there were some little cakes left over, thanks to Bridget, that she had bought on, uh, on Thursday. And uh, so all the ladies had a little cake. And uh, thank you, Bridget. Uh, they, they enjoyed it. And there was actually one left over for me, so that was great. Next Sunday is uh, Sunday school and adult Bible class at 9 o'clock in the morning. 10.30 is our worship service. And again, uh, Pastor Rory will be preaching at that service. He's preaching every two weeks. Um, that doesn't mean you can stay away the other week. But, uh, but we look forward to the meeting. And Eric, will there be a youth meeting next Sunday? Or are you going no, to postpone it to the following week? Yeah, I'm going to send out a roster. So the day's pastor wants preachers here, the following week will be youth, and she'll come and take it. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Except the youth want youth church every Sunday. Yeah, I'm sure they do. So that's another conversation. <laughs> and it's fine. Praise the Lord, they want it. And uh, welcome to Hedy and Sandy. Lovely to have you visiting with us again. Hedy's been rushing around, not exactly rushing, huh? but going around most of the for what for two and a half, three weeks, yeah. and uh, uh, had good results thus far. He's waiting for further feedback, and uh, one week he'll come and share with us what God has been doing there. And um, as you know, we support the Mozambique mission, and uh, one of the one of the uh, one of the groups that we support, one of the missionaries that we support. So thank you, Hedy, and Sandy, and love to have you with us today. And then, Val, our love and condolences to you and to your sister and your family. And Val's brother went to be with the Lord on Wednesday. And uh, we've been praying for you, and we know that the Lord will continue to comfort you and strengthen you and your family through this time. So we will bless you as you share with us today as well. Uh, and then finally, um, if you've got your newsletter, if you pick one up, you'll see there's um, a thing there for a blanket drive. Now, uh, Sister Watts has asked 
that we take part in it as well. She's organizing this. And if you've got any old blankets, or, well, used blankets, new blankets that you have no need for, um, please bring them to the church. She's collecting them all to share with those that are in need. And, um, and they know the folk that are in need of those blankets. So um, you'll see a table at the back uh, outside there. Um, please remember that. And if you can, bring along some blankets for that as well. So the Lord bless you. That's, that's everything over. Now we can get to worshiping the Lord. Are you looking forward to worshiping the Lord? Amen. Amen. It's lovely. Oh, it's so precious to be in the house of the Lord today. So we're going to worship a bit. Uh, I want you to be able to reach out and touch the Lord. Let's go. <coughs> Oh, 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 
Father, through Jesus, the Son. 
victory for Christ the Savior is risen. Crown him King. Crown him Lord of your life this morning. Let there be victory. Let there be rejoicing. For I, Jesus, have set you free. I have come that you might have peace. That you might have peace that passeth all understanding. This morning, my child, look unto me, the author and the finisher of your salvation. For your faith ever is in me, ye shall have no fear, for I cast out all fear. Rejoice this morning. Rejoice for the Lord your Christ liveth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. There is victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, majesty, majesty. Wonderful Lord, King of kings and Lord of lords. We do it this morning, Lord. We bow before you. We acknowledge your greatness. We acknowledge your love, your mercy, and your grace. Oh, my God, how great and wonderful. Oh, you, O oh Lord, Amen. oh, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you. Oh, my soul rejoices in the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, my soul is glad. Hallelujah. Thank oh, we you. have victory in Jesus this morning. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Oh, what a privilege, people, we are. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Oh, what a blessing. Thank you, Lord. Oh. Sweetness. Sweetness of the Holy Spirit. So precious, so precious. Anybody like to share something this morning? Before we continue? On the 19th of June, my husband put on the uh, gas heater for the first time, but he battled to get it going. And we, we got it going. Next minute, we just heard, 
and it has a flame handling case too. Luckily, the bottle was on the floor outside of the container, not inside the container. I just to run upstairs, go and get the wet towel that you can put out this fire. And I was screaming at him, hurry up, hurry up, the fire's getting bigger, the fire's getting bigger. As it ran along, the, all the connections in the top were all burned. And that pipe that goes to the gas bottle, it was it caught light then too. So I'm saying, praise the Lord. Our curtains were closed, number one, because otherwise that curtains would have caught a light. This is in my lounge. And then also the, uh, the gas bottle could have caught a light. So I thank the Lord for protecting us there. Then on the Wednesday, the 21st, I came home and I came home early after work. I just thought I must go home now about 20 past 12 or something. And I thought I won't go to text and then I'll go Thursday or Friday. Just as well. The Lord knows. I went straight home. I come there, my gate is wide open. The first thing I looked to see if my back door was open. It wasn't open, I said, oh, thank you. And then I looked to see if my brother's flat, if his place was all right, it wasn't open. And I thank you, the Lord, for protection there, because the only wasn't there, he was far away at my son's plot, and uh, at Kaya Sanze, and uh, Fogel. And um, so I thank the Lord for his protection over that house, because the gate to my back door is very close, so they could have gone in there, and I tell you, they can break into anything. anything. We've seen that. And I also want to thank the Lord, this morning I walked in here, with such a knock to my tummy. And thank the Lord, I've got peace in my stomach because my dad and then prayed for me. I don't have that knock like I had when I walked in here this morning. I want to thank the Lord for that. And thank the Lord also for being with me and my sister Lynette this week. All we had to go through and do on our own and that. But I want to thank him and all the traveling up and down to the hospital. I thank the Lord for so far what he's done for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Um, I guess we can read each other's I and J Christians, fine and frozen. <laughs> um, from Sandy and I, I would just like to thank the congregation for receiving past and sister Watts in the manner in which you have. It's, it's a congregation that many of you weren't part of, many of us were not part of. It started in 1967, but it's God's work, and this will be the third pastor, and it will be a bigger congregation. And God doesn't work by numbers; He works by heart, and your heart has been right. So I just want to thank you and Sandy. Very emotional for us, and it's not a giving away; it's a growing in the faith and in the fellowship. It's just the next season and the next step in the right direction. We prayed for many years and Pastor Carter was sent Claude and he was the right man at the right time. And bless you, Lorna, for yours and Claude's ministry. You folk don't know, but Claude and Pastor spoke probably every day. It was such a support. And now I know that you will give your support wholeheartedly to Pastor and Sister Watts, but it's the fellowship and the glory of the Lord. That's what we seek. And from the bottom of my heart, I just say thank you very, very much. There's a way to go, but there's nothing to fear. There's nothing to fear. Change will come, a little bit here, a little bit there. But the point is, if we all look to Jesus and glorify His name, then His name is truly glorified. And then we've done the right thing always. So I just praise the Lord. Thank you. The Lord bless you, each and every one. The congregations will be integrated probably over in the next three months. So, end of September, early October, I think we'll all be fellowshipping here. And it'll be wonderful that we all worship and serve the Lord together. Please expect a phone call from Pastor and Sister Watts. They're going to try and see all of you and as many of you as quick as possible. Um, the rights are specifically asked, please start at W or Z. <laughs> So, um, they're going to work up. So the M's, you always get to be seen. But this time, if you're A, B, C, or D, you might be seeing them later next year. <laughs> but they're going to come and visit each family. And that's what pastorship's about. It's about the family. Ministering.
to each family. So thank you very much. The Lord bless you as we continue in this journey. Amen. 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 Thank you. Let me take up the offering. Um, Anna, can you do this side, please? And Bridget, would you come and do this side, please? I <laughs> could. <laughs> We're going to sing Amazing Grace, and then I hand over to Dave.
This is romantic, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, when uh, Pastor Rory last week mentioned, uh, we get the same feedback here. When Pastor Rory last week was mentioned, uh, you see, had a friend called Donovan. I think he called him Donovan, but his name is Donovan, and uh, he, he's from the coloured community. And we spent quite a lot of time with the coloured community. We um, we were ministering in a tent uh, for six six months. Uh, Sunday morning, Sunday evening with the colours, and they are different people. They they know how to rejoice. Yes, no, no, that they uh, when you go to a coloured service, they it's gun ho. Uh, but um, and, and since he mentioned that, uh, there's one song that we, they used to sing uh, when we were in the tent, and I can't get it out of my mind. And I said, I want to go over it with you if you don't mind. We just sing it through twice. And, uh, it'll, kind of loosen us up a bit and line us up a bit. <laughs> and it's um, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. Amen. I think we've got it. I, I want you to see like you're alone in the shower. <laughs> okay. I want you to try and imagine that uh, you're in a covered service. Okay, let's do more. Trying to drown us out. 
Anyway, this place was, uh, we had uh, drug dealers there, um, uh, ex-drug dealers. Mom was shot and was in a wheelchair, couldn't go anywhere. And, uh, but I tell you, it's not wrong being a Christian. It's never a dull moment when, you, when you're in, in circumstances like that. Um, okay, anyone ever remember, class, what we spoke about, or what I spoke about? Faith. Faith. Well, almost. <laughs> almost. I want to go through, what we're going through is, uh, God willing, I want to go through a small series of um, teachings, if you like. And it's what every Christian should do from periodically, from time to time. It's a checklist. It's like a, a service. It's see if you're still in the faith. And the text we looked at is from 2 Peter 3, 18. Um, that you may grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's growing in grace. Uh, I just had my car serviced and I do it regularly. And because I do it regularly, it's, it serves me well. But Christians are the same. We go through this journey of life with the Lord. And we think we could just go on and on and on and on. And, and keep going at the same pace when we can't. We need to sometimes step back and have a look how we're doing. To check this. And last time we were here, uh, we spoke about reading the Word. How important it is for Christians to be in the Word and the Word to be in the Christian. It's our, it's our owner's manual, if you like. It tells us everything we need to know about God. Everything we need to know about ourselves and how we should conduct ourselves as a Christian in this world and through this, we're going up and down and through this life. So what we spoke about last time was reading the Word. Reading the Word. Being in the Word. Learning from the Word. Studying the Word. Applying the Word. And most important of all, doing the Word. So this week, I'd like us to look at carrying on from that. I'd like us to look at one verse of scripture, and it's in the book of Luke, and it's chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, it's quite easy to find. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We bless you and give you thanks. Thank you for your word. And Lord, in the name of the Lord God most high, Yahweh, Lord, we declare this time holy time unto the Lord our God. And that this ground shall be holy ground unto the Lord our God. And Father, we ask as the sheep of your pasture that you'll feed your sheep today from the living word. We bless you, Lord, and give you thanks. Amen. One verse of scripture. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. This is the Lord Jesus speaking. And he spoke the parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. I wonder if I were to ask you today, how's your prayer life? How's your prayer life? And while I'm speaking to you, I'm obviously, it's coming back to me. I can hear it. I can hear myself louder than you. How's your prayer life? And the Lord Jesus tells us here, and he spoke a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always, always to pray and not to faint. I think in, in, the, in, the, in our prayer life, in a Christian's life, perhaps this is the easiest area to faint in. I'm sure we go to God when we're in times of need. 
and, and we know that we often do this and the Lord asks us, instructs us and tells us that we should come near to the throne of grace to find help in time of need. And isn't that a wonderful invitation from the Lord God Most High? To come boldly before the throne of grace to find help in time of need. And the truth is, brothers and sisters, the strength of any Christian, the strength of any Christian is in direct proportion to the prayer life. Prayer is our, it's our link to Almighty God. It's that link that connects us with Almighty God. And through it, it activates an unseen series of events that moves the forces of heaven on our behalf. I wonder if we really know how, prayer, how powerful prayer can be. How powerful prayer can be. I think if we did know that, we would certainly spend more time in prayer and in fellowship with the Lord. Prayer also reinforces our dependency on God. And it highlights, without Him, we can do nothing. I think it's perhaps one of my favorite verses in Scripture from John 10, 10 where Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. I like that. It, it, it speaks to me. Without me, you can do nothing. And the other side of that is where the Lord says, with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. <laughs> How do we pray? Let me kind of put this illustration to you. Imagine that you were in, in desperate financial trouble and you were about to be evicted from your home. Maybe some of you think I don't have to imagine it. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I've been there. But imagine that you are you're desperately in financial need, or any need really. But let's take a financial need as an illustration. And you you just don't have anything to pay your bills with. And you've got the eviction notice, you've got people phoning you because you're your debt and, and payment is overdue. And then someone, a, a very well-known person to you, a very wealthy person, comes to you and says, don't worry, I'll sort it. I'll pay all your debts. I'll pay all your bills. And I'll supply all your needs. When would you thank them? When they do it? Or when they told you they do it? When they told them. Yeah. Prayers like that. When you go to God and you present this petition to Him and you ask Him according to His will, that's when you thank Him for the answer. Not when you see the answer. You hear me? Yeah. Because he who cannot lie should be believed. Amen. And when he says he will supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, we should believe him. And we thank him there and then for the answer to prayer. Prayer changes things. Prayer coupled with faith changes things. Prayer can raise the dead, can heal the sick, cast out demons, and it can suspend the natural order of things. 
Remember when Joshua was chasing his enemies? And he said uh, he didn't have time, the sun was going down, and he commanded, stand still. Can you believe this, brothers and sisters, that this man, Joshua, commanded the sun to stand still? And we read in the Bible that the sun stood still for about a day. In fact, it was 23 hours and 40 minutes. Commanded the sun to stand still so he could pursue his enemies, overtake them, and destroy them. Now, Joshua is no different from you and I. He was God's chosen person, like you and I. But the power of prayer, coupled with faith, changes things. Mm -hmm. And I've told you this story before, but perhaps you didn't hear it, let me repeat it. On, on a similar but much smaller scale, we were moving house. And the, the, the summer storm clouds were building and building and building until they were indigo, dark, with, with rain. And brothers and sisters, I don't know if you ever move, but you don't want to move when it's pouring with rain in, in, a, in a high field thunderstorm. <laughs> and I looked up and looked at these clouds and said, I command you in the name of Jesus, you will not rain until we finish moving. And it did. We finished moving, and then the rain came. The rain came. The power of prayer. Who am I? I'm just a child of God, like you are. Coupled with faith, prayer changes things. As a Christian, and if you want to check that your Christian life is on track, you have to have a prayer life. You have to cultivate one. And you have to do what Jesus says, not faint in prayer. And he spoke this parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. In your prayer life, you will be resisted. You will be resisted. And you'll be resisted in three main areas of your prayer life. You'll be resisted by your enemy, for he goes around like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. He will resist you in your prayer life. He'll tell you it's not working. He'll lie to you. He'll tell you it's not worth it. Why are you bothering? He will resist you, like he did with the servant of God, Daniel, when he prayed. And his prayer was resisted for 21 days until the archangel came to help him. And he said to Daniel, from the moment you prayed, your prayer was heard. But the answer came 21 days later. This is why the Lord says, don't faint. You've been praying, don't faint. Amen. You've been praying, don't faint. We've been praying for something for years. Have we given up? No, we pray every day. Why? And we thank God for it. The answer to prayer. We know we're going to get it. We know it. We're absolutely sure. Why? Because God's promised. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. That your joy might be full. Can God lie? No. Can we be resisted? Yes. Should we continue? Yes. How should we continue? Steadfast. Unmovable. Determined that you will get what you ask for according to God's will. You'll be resisted by your enemy. You'll be resisted by your flesh. Your flesh is no longer getting up in the morning to pray. And that demon called Duva in the winter months, <laughs> it will have you. Oh, no, it's so nice. It's so warm, I can't get up. You'll be resisted by your flesh. Your flesh will war against the spiritual things that God has put in your heart and mind. Is this constant battle? Constant battle that goes on between every believer within us. A battle of the flesh and a battle of the spirit. The two are enmity against each other. 
but we do overcome, brothers and sisters. You'll be resisted by your flesh. And you'll be resisted by doubt. Because you've prayed for so long for something, and you haven't seen the answer yet, doubt creeps in. But fight against it. Stand up against it. Resist it. And this is how you resist it. God said. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's all you need. God said. Here it is. If I ask anything in his name, he will do it. That my joy might be free. God said. So don't let doubt creep into your life and destroy your life. Destroy your, your prayer life. The Bible tells us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the putting down of strongholds. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not sticks and stones or, bow, uh, or, 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 or bullets or bombs. They're not carnal. The weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the putting down of strongholds. I was listening to, some, listening to recently to someone talking about the Spartans. I don't know if you've heard about the Spartans. They, they were soldiers um, long ago. And they were trained from, from young, from a youth. That's what they were. They were soldiers. They were warriors. They were fighters. And their, their, their uh, reputation spread far and wide. And although there weren't many of them, their enemies were scared of them because they were battle-hardened warriors. And brothers and sisters, that's what you and I should be in the spirit. We should be Spartans. We should be warriors. We are battle-hardened. And we have the power of God and the word of God that backs up every prayer we pray. Don't give up in your prayer life. Don't think, oh, it doesn't work. Don't think it's for someone else. Not for you. Now, many Christians think, I can't do anything. I'm not worthy to do anything. I don't know anything. I can't do anything. I'm just... Someone who sits on the pew. But brothers and sisters, you can pray. You have to pray as a Christian. It's part of our character, our prayer life. You remember the story where um, Israel is, is fighting their enemies and Moses goes up on the hill overlooking the battle and, and um, Aaron and her go up with him. Or Joshua, I can't remember. Aaron and her or Joshua and her. They go up with him. And as the battle is raging, when Moses lifts up his hands in prayer, Israel prevails. The people of God prevail. But when his hands grow weary, the enemy prevails. When he lifts his hands up, the people of God prevail. When he lifts his hands up in prayer, they get the victory. When he lets his hands down because he's weary, the enemy prevails. And that's a parody of our, our, our prayer life, our Christian life. When we're praying and we're lifting up holy hands unto God, when we're praying and we're, we're, we're presenting our petitions to God, we prevail. But the moment we get weary, and don't pray, that's when the enemy creeps in and gets the victory over us. We don't read in that scripture anywhere where the children of Israel, or God's people, got weary from fighting. But we do read in scripture where the people of God got weary from praying. This is an important lesson. If we want the victory, don't stop praying. And if your arms are weary and you can't lift them up, 
call friends around you to help you and pray with you and lift your arms up. I wonder if a battle you're going through right now in your own personal life and you thought, I can't do it anymore, my arms are weary. Call someone, pray with you. And if you have the strength, lift your arms up again in prayer and present your petition to the Lord and you will see the victory. You'll see the victory. We, we, we're overcomers. Do you understand that? Can you understand that? That word of God tells us that we are overcomers. It tells us that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Do you, do you understand that? You're a Christian. No, I'm a Christian. You're a Christian. You're a Christian. You're a child of the Most High God. Proverbs 15 verse 8 tells us the prayer of the upright is his delight. The, pr the prayer of the upright is his delight. Can you imagine God being delighted in your prayers? I mean, we, we often go to God like uh, we're beggars, we're not beggars. I know we have to come to God in, in, in humility and humble, but we're not beggars. The Bible tells us to come boldly before the throne of grace. Not arrogantly, but boldly before the throne of grace. Why? To find help in time of need. You have time of need? Well, I think you do. You have time of need? Then come boldly before the throne of grace. How do you come boldly before the throne of grace? In prayer. Many Christians are defeated and downhearted because they have a, a, a shell of their life. Not a vibrant prayer life. James 5.16 tells us, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The effectual fervent <laughs> prayer of a righteous man avails much. In, uh, in England during the... Uh, um, when, when Queen Elizabeth I was reigning in England, and the, the, uh, the Pope sent his armies through to Scotland and, and placed Queen Mary on the throne in Scotland. They're, what they wanted to do, the, the plan was to invade England with the Catholic army and take over England and make it a, another Catholic nation. Since Henry VIII broke away with the church in Rome, England has never had a Catholic leader since then. They're a Protestant nation. But during this time, it was a, it was a very um, serious time when the uh, Queen Mary, Queen Mary of Scotland, Mary, Queen of Mary, uh, Mary of Scotland, she said, I fear the prayers of John Knox more than all the armies of England. John Knox was a Protestant reformer a mighty, powerful preacher, but he was one man, one man. And she said, I fear the prayers of John Knox more than all the armies of England. Your prayers are powerful. Your prayers are mighty if they're directed according to the will of God. Now, James tells us also, you have not because you're asking this. So, we need to pray according to the will of God. And we need to pray correctly. Not like this. When my daughter Frances and I, she was maybe five or six. I can't remember, around that age, five or six. And uh, she was naughty to me. Like she, I can't remember what she did. But I said to her, go to your room and you'll stay there. And you two come out and say you're sorry to your father. So she mumbled off and went to her room, shut the door, and ages went by. Ages and ages and ages. So I thought I'd better go and see what's wrong with her. So I opened the door, looked in there, she's scowling at me. I said, Are you sorry? She said, No. <laughs> and you were staying. I went back a while later, opened the door. Are you sorry? Are you going to say sorry to your father? No. You'll stay there. I mean, 
You, you have no idea this battle of wills is still on between us. We both liked it. Anyway, we went back again, opened the door, I said, are you sorry now? And she said, no. And I'm going to tell Jesus to kill you. <laughs> Psalm 99 verse 6 it says they called upon the Lord and he answered them how reassuring is that they called upon the Lord and he answered them how gracious how loving of God and he called upon the Lord and he answered them. The Bible is full of answered prayer. From cover to cover. Why should you think that God will not answer your prayer? And even if we wait, we don't wait in vain. God will answer your prayer. He will help you. You know, Prayer should be our first resort. Not our last when all else fails. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we say, oh well, we can always pray like it's like the last resort. Mm -hmm. No, it's our first. Mm -hmm. It's our first resort. It's our first resort. I want you know, <coughs> we've done this often, I can't remember that often when uh, uh, like you maybe go to check out uh, just recently, I was in um, the uh, uh, food market, the, the food lovers place, and uh, as I was coming through there, I felt the Lord speak to me. He said, "Speak to her." This was, was, was lady behind the uh, Indian lady behind the counter there, or doing the till. And I said, "Are you having a bad day?" She said, "No, well, I missed it." <laughs> so I said to her, "Don't worry." The Lord will hear you. The Lord will answer you. And it kind of took her back a bit. And she said, thank you. I really needed that encouragement. And you just don't know who needs that encouragement. And when someone says to you, oh, would you like me to pray? Or you ask someone, would you like me to pray for you? And they say, oh, yes. Then don't say, okay, I'll pray for you. Go, do it there and then. Pray for you. <laughs> doesn't matter where it is. It doesn't matter if it's in the supermarket, in the garage, or wherever it is. Pray for them there and then. You don't know what God will do through your prayers. Uh, just come to mind now. We, we, were, we were driving around uh, looking for a place uh, to, to, have something to eat. In, in, somewhere out of, out of the way of it, in a hotel like a country place. <coughs> and as we come up to this, I can't remember the name of the hotel. As we come up to the place, there was a gate, a boom, with a, a security guy there. And uh, yeah, he takes your name and number. And I uh, said to him, uh, well, uh, could I ask you a question? He said, yeah. I said, are you saved? Do you, do you know Jesus is your savior? And he, he, he left us, he went back to his hut, where he was his little security guard hut. And he came out with a, his New Testament. And he said, uh, I was just reading this now. And I said to God, I don't understand it. Can you? Wow. <laughs> wow. What, what, can you remember? Michael, yeah. Um, he said, I was just reading this now, and I didn't understand it. And I asked God to like, show me, send me someone you know, to make me understand this. And I think he was reading from the book of John. 
So he explained to us in the way of salvation and he gave his life to the Lord. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Oh. Amen. You see, my prayer wasn't answered, but his was. Amen. Do you understand? Do you understand? Prayer. I'm, I'm always in prayer. Not this is I'm Petro's a prayer warrior. Um, she's my kind of hero when it comes to prayer. And um, she's up early praying. Early, early, early. Praying and spending time with God. I'm kind of not like that. I'm kind of all the what time praying. That's what it means pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean um, you know, it, it means pray without ceasing. Wherever you are, walking, talking, just I'm always in kind of contact with the Lord. And, and most of the prayers I say is sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Amen. Sorry, 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 You drop on sorry, 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 Lord. Sorry. But it's in constant communication. And that's what your Heavenly Father wants from you. Constant communication without ceasing, without fainting. And remember what his word says. The prayer of the righteous. It's his delight. You say, I'm not righteous. Well, I'd have to disagree with you because the Bible tells me, tells me you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you're in Christ, you're righteous. You say, I don't feel very righteous. It's got nothing to do with what, how you feel. It's a positional thing. You're righteous in God. And the prayer of the righteous is his delight. Prayer of the righteous is his delight. So, prayer should be our first resort, not our last. It's better to put a fence at the top of the cliff than to put an ambulance at the bottom. Remember that same thing. It's better to put a fence at the top of the cliff than an ambulance at the bottom. Prayer is like the fence at the top of the cliff. It stops you falling over where the ambulance will pick you up and take you to the hospital. You obviously didn't get that, did you? We'll, we'll turn back. This is what... Uh, Charles Spurgeon says, if you believe in prayer at all, if you believe in prayer at all, expect God to hear you. If you do not expect, you will not have God will not hear you unless you believe He will hear you. But if you believe He will, He will be as good as your faith. Your faith. Let me read that again properly. If you believe in prayer at all, expect God to hear you. If you do not expect, you will not have. God will not hear you unless you believe He will hear you. But if you believe He will, He will be as good as your faith. In closing, this is kind of the formula about prayer. Some prayer, some power. More prayer, more power. Much prayer, much power. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Give you thanks. Thank you, Lord, that you do delight in our prayers. We're not burdensome to you. You don't say, oh, here they come again. You delight in the prayers of your people. And we give you thanks, Lord, for answered prayer. And Father, I want to lift up every prayer to you now that's not been answered yet. For the congregation here today, Lord, who've been praying for something, or are praying for something, and haven't seen the results yet. I ask, Lord, that you would instill in each one the strength and the power to go on, not to give up not to faint. Lord, that you will supply, you will supply the strength in the inner man 
to carry on in prayer until the answer is seen. We thank you, Lord, that you've given this great weapon of warfare for us, the power of prayer. But when you hear prayer and you answer, nothing can stop it. Nothing in heaven, on earth, or under the earth can stop the hand of God when he answers our prayers. We give you thanks, God. And now, Father, I pray again for every heart answered prayer. Lord, that you will hear from heaven, that you will activate, that you will move, that you will stir yourself up and answer prayers this day, whether they be physical, financial, spiritual. I pray, Lord, for this people here today, Lord. And Lord, on this the first day of the week, as we've gathered together in your name to worship the Lord our God and to lift up holy hands and bless the God of heaven who loved us and gave his life for us, we give you thanks. And Lord, as we set this time aside, we give you the first fruits of our week. I ask your blessing upon each one of us today for the coming week. I ask, Lord, that we'll find favor with you and with them, and that you'll bless the work of our hands. And whatever we put our hand to shall prosper. I pray, Lord, that this week we will lack nothing, that the blessing of the Lord our God, which makes uh, rich and has no sorrow to it, shall be our portion throughout this week. Lord, send. Open the windows of heaven. If there be financial need, supply. If there be spiritual need, uh, Lord, hear and, and answer our prayer. If there be physical need, Lord, remember your word. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Remember, Lord, you said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And Lord, you said, is there anything too hard for me? Lord, we know nothing that's too hard for you. Lord, hear from heaven, I pray, and bless the congregation. Bless each one that's represented here today. Lord, answer our prayer. Answer unanswered prayers for, for unsaved loved ones that are, are out there today, Lord. Lord, redeem them, save them, uh, speak to them through any method or any means that you find fit. Speak to them, Lord. Answer them, soften their hearts, and speak to them, Lord. Lord, blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name, the Lord God of heaven who lives and loves us, who gave his life for us. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Lord, remember, 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 Lord, that though we are your people, the sheep of your pasture, and we say, blessed be your holy name, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. So, in closing, so I read, um, read the word, pray. I'm not sure whether we'll get through the rest, but God willing we will. And these are the five things I want you to check, your own checklist. Read the word, pray, fellowship, tell others about Christ. And uh, I can tell you this because I don't take any money from the church. Tithe. Amen. Tithe. Read the word. Pray, fellowship, tell others about Christ, time. That's your spiritual checklist. You have to check it regularly. If you're doing those five things, you will, like Peter says, you will grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can you stand and sing, when you pray, will you pray for me? <coughs> and sing it to each other. As you sing, just turn around, sing it to the people around you, asking them.